to learn to live the off-grid lifestyle, and to be inspired to live your dreams, click subscribe so you don't miss anything. Click the bell notification. It's all free. So today I thought I'd do just a little bit of this and that video. There's a YouTuber that does this series called This and That. I really like that series. So as you may know, I have three sets of birds or chickens that I've got separated for now. Now eventually, that's going to go down to one, and then in the springtime, well, I guess summertime, it'll go down to two. Okay, so what I got is I have, and they're going to run off from me. I have these mature chickens. These guys are full grown. The hens, the brown ones, are producing. That's Frenchie. He's a rooster, and we keep him around for the time that we want to actually breed our chickens because these buff orphantons are very broody that means they'll lay on their eggs very well so eventually when they get old enough that they want to breed brood we'll start letting them brood and they can hatch their own chickens they'll protect the little chicks from anybody hurting them so that's why we kept frenchy he's very pretty he's a americana or an easter egg we're not sure which he's also famous then we have what we call the littles and we actually have two sets of littles in here we have the Rhode Islands right here. And the Rhode Islands uh, are, should be full grown by now. They should be producing eggs, they're not, which kind of tells me they probably won't start producing until next spring. If you buy chickens too late, if they hatch too late in the year, they will not produce during the fall. Well, it's August, it's not fall time, but they're not producing yet, they should be. The reason they're in here with the littles is because Frenchie, wants to breed with them well they're just not understanding that so they get all scared and they hide and shaky and so we've kept them in here with the littles now the the rest of the chickens in here are americanas and they're a lot younger than the rhode islands and then the last set we have is meat birds and these are cornish cross chickens they're bred specifically for meat it rained yesterday, so they're a little muddy, so I gotta give them a bath. As soon as it dries up in here a little bit, I'm gonna give them another bath. I give them a bath about every three days. You saw me do that the other day. These guys will be butchered anywhere in between eight to 12 weeks old. Probably leaning towards more 12 weeks than, than the eight weeks. There might be a couple in here we'll look at. They're seven weeks old today, quite large, and they're almost as large as the littles now, so they've grown quite quickly. The, most of their meat goes into their breast area their legs are, really don't have the strength to support them at 12 weeks old and i've talked about this where a lot of people don't think it's ethical that you raise cornish cross now the only two reasons that we raise chickens obviously is for meat and for eggs we have the meat birds they do their job we're going to raise them up for 12 weeks and then we're going to butcher them that's our meat then everything over here that i just showed you needs to be a female so all the littles, they need to be female. All these guys are female. And then we have one rooster who really isn't doing anything except producing new chickens. So he's eating food, he's taking resources, but not doing a lot. Whereas these guys produce three eggs a day nearly, two to three eggs a day, which is feeding me lunch. So once these guys get started, then that'd be lunch and supper and all kinds of different stuff. The other thing with the Americanas is the Americanas will produce colored eggs, blues and greens and different things. So once they start producing, we could sell their eggs for a pretty significant price. About $4 is what we're looking at. When we bought the littles from the farm, she said she could sex them by looking at their wings, but we have since realized that you can't sex Americanas by their wings. There's a dip in it that shows if it's a male or female. We suspected once we learned that, that there's probably roosters in there so our idea was is that we'll butcher anything as a rooster now i'm pretty sure we can tell which ones are roosters and which ones are not they got the darker combs is what it is i think we're going to have out of the eight chickens that we got i think we're going to have at least four that are roosters well yesterday one of them proved to us that he was a rooster he looks just like frenchy so yesterday he tried to crow Arr! he was terrible at it you know he's got to practice so Carolyn and I decided that we would go ahead and butcher him so we didn't have to feed him, and that's meat. Okay, what I'm about to show you, I know somebody's going to be upset with me, and they're going to yell and report me to YouTube, but YouTube says there's two types of things that can happen when it comes to meat. 
if it's a living animal, you can't show the butchering process. But then when you buy the meat from the store and you cook it, you can show that. So just pretend this is meat from the store because this is what meat from the store looks like. So you'll see here, that's Frenchy Jr. And I don't pull the feathers off, I skin. You can just skin it like you do a deer or a squirrel or anything. It produces a lot of meat. We'll get enough meat out of this for a couple meals probably. That's the breast and backbone. These are the thighs and legs. Not huge, but he was still pretty young. I like chicken soup. Carolyn's not a big chicken soup fan. I didn't know that until just recently. So she may bake these or something. Okay, I think in the previous video, I showed you that I was tilling this up for our corn garden. I, I've got it like a racetrack right now. I've just kind of been doing circles. You'll see, it just kind of does a circle all the way around. So I've hooked the tiller up behind the lawnmower. I pull the tiller with the lawnmower as it's spinning one direction and the lawnmower is going the other direction. And it's working out really well. Down here seems to be doing better than up there. Up there has a lot of rocks and sticks and stuff in it. So I'm just gonna have to keep at it. But this is gonna be a nice size corn garden. I think this is probably double the size I used to have, oh no, I don't know, 10 years ago, 12 years ago. Now back then what I would do is I would do two plantings. I would plant in the spring and then again the second season. I had enough corn to last us all winter and into the next year doing it that way. So this will give us, in just in one planting, everything we'll need to eat. Because when I did it back then, we had three miles to feed, and now it's only two. As you know, I've been having some carburetor issues on my tiller. It's surging, it goes rah, 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 like that. Well, that's definitely a carburetor issue. What the problem is, is there's dirt in the carburetor, or the gaskets are bad or something. So yesterday, I attempted to clean the carburetor. I've usually had a lot of success doing that. And a bolt had actually fallen off into the carburetor, so there was a bolt in the carburetor. It was just in bad shape. I can tell the adjustments were off. After I got it all put back together, it still did the surging thing. My choices were to buy a rebuild kit for the tiller, for the carburetor, or buy a new carburetor. And I was about ready to buy the rebuild kit and realize, you know, it's $10 for the rebuild kit. Now, I think you get two kits where you can rebuild it twice, so it would have been $5. But I only need one. And the carburetor was only $20. So I thought, what the heck, $20, just go ahead and buy the carburetor. So I bought the carburetor, and when it comes in, I'll put it on. That should resolve my problem. That'll have the gaskets and everything that I need to get it up and running. The, the presets, they'll all be set. I won't have to mess with that, I'm trying to guess what it should be. Once the tiller's up and running, I'll be able to finish the garden up a lot easier. So as I'm sure some of you are aware, Carolyn is 10 years older than me. A lot of people say, if anything ever happens to me, what will Carolyn do? And I've talked about that a lot. Carolyn, I feel like I've got set up very well that she can pretty much do whatever she wants with the place. There's an electric pole here. Now, I know every time I show this, I get millions of people saying, Aha, I knew you were hooked up to the grid. The, the meter has actually been removed. Carolyn could call an electrician and have this fixed up in no time. She could run wire to the, the house. I've got it all hooked up. All she's got to do is just run call the electrician out then she calls the electric company out they put in a new meter and it's done it's, it's got the breaker box right here everything's here for her. so if she wanted to hook up to electric she could it's got the breaker it's got the wires coming out so I think Carolyn's set up but that all being said the solar panels do a pretty good job by themselves if she wanted to she could just stay on the uh, solar panels the refrigerator is what takes the most electric. She has actually talked about not even using the refrigerator. Of course, she continues to can, then she could do that. But now, I don't know if she would maintain the chickens and all that. I would imagine she would still do the garden. She seems to enjoy doing the garden. But I've never really talked about what I would do if Carolyn left this mortar coil before me. Hey, Carolyn and I were talking about this yesterday. What are the odds that I would go first? And, with her being 10 years older, we might die at the same time. Women usually live a little longer than men. Just thinking about this. What would I continue to do? Well, I would continue to do the chickens. I enjoy the chickens. Of course, I wouldn't need as many. I'd probably raise the meat birds as long as I can. Of course, the older I get, the harder that would be. The meat chickens would be because they take a lot of uh, attention. But I would definitely keep the 
egg chickens. I would probably still continue to can. I enjoy canning. So a lot of this is just my hobbies. I mean, I live with my hobbies. Isn't that amazing? Now, I would not continue the garden. I I've given this a lot of thought. I say that there's an aspect of the garden I would probably continue. I thought about tomatoes. I like tomatoes. I can can tomatoes. They're pretty easy to do. But I got to thinking, what would I really eat with them? I'm just being realistic with myself. Uh, yes, I know there are going to be a lot of people, oh, you need to do this, you need to do that. And it's not the thing that I need to do. That's not the thing I'm talking about. It's the things I, do I, do I need them? So what would I do with tomatoes? I like tomatoes off the vine. I eat them like that. I might have a tomato or two, but would I can the tomatoes? I like spaghetti. Beyond that, I don't think there's much I would do with tomatoes. So it would, I guess, really depend on how I feel that year. Do I really want to raise tomatoes? Now, the one thing I would garden is corn. I'm a big corn fan. I eat corn all the time. It's easy to raise. I could can it. But I would start to minimize some of the stuff that I have to do. Of course, she does all the cooking, and I'm not a big fan of cooking. So if she's gone, I have to figure out meals that I would like to cook. So what are the meals that were easy to cook for me? Chicken noodle soup. I could cook chicken noodle soup almost every night for myself. I like corn, so chicken noodle soup and corn. I would try to stay realistic with what I want. But yeah, I would scale back just because it's things that I don't like to do and don't need to do. So I hope I can inspire you to think about your future when you're living your dream. Thanks for watching.